Yeah, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, we don't yeah. do that. That's not, that is not biblical. We don't. I mean, it's in the Bible. In the Bible, it does not say, sue everybody. Have a good time. Sue those who destroy your phone. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Uh, okay, whenever we are, when we're talking about what we're doing for quizzes and tests, number one thing is, and just like whenever you all come to my desk and you ask me a question, where do I send you to first to look things up? Notes. In your notes. So the first place you should go is in your notes. If you are keeping impeccable notes, was almost all of this in your notes? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, now, what I saw the most struggle with is turning things into standard form, which was, I believe, chapter 3, section 1, somewhere in there. Uh -huh. So let's look at the bottom of the page. Bottom of the page, you had y equals uh, 3x minus 1. Okay, in any equation, are you on Dreambox or do we need to shut these screens? Stop looking at the discussion Yeah, let's, let's definitely close the computer there. <laughs> See, Ms. Barnes is thinking only nice things in her brain. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Okay, so in order to be standard form, what did the rule say? Where does everything have to be? On the left side. Yeah, standard form. Some of you guys wrote the actual AX plus BY equals C. Again, novel idea. However, the whole point is the X and the Y has to be on this side over here. So, a lot of you guys just said, oh, cool, I'll pick that up and just throw it over here. Is that the way you move something from one side to the other? No. What do you have to do? Subtract. Yeah. You actually have to subtract it here and subtract it here. Now, somebody else also asked, can I just squish these two together? No. What do I have to put in between these? No. Plus. plus. So, that's negative 3x plus y equals negative 1. It's all about just moving things around, and you're going to run into this again in chapter four. So, we're going to practice this a lot. What up, Home Pickle? Yeah, what I did just is the same thing, where I just put the uh, negative 3x after y, so it's just y minus 3x. That's fine. As long as the x and the y were on one side, I'm Gucci. All right, so let's talk about the two at the bottom of the page, because those were the ones that were commonly missed. Um, we talked about four kinds of slopes. Four kinds of slopes. You could have a positive slope, you could have a negative slope, and then the last two were what kinds? Slope is zero undefined. Zero and undefined. So if you have a line that says x equals negative one, what was the other one? Y equals what? Four. There you go. So when we have these two particular types of things, in your notes I said pretty explicitly this is exactly what you have to do. If you have an x equals line, what kind of slope is that? Undefined. Yes, undefined. That is in your notes. What that means is that you had a zero in the denominator whenever you calculated slope. What does this line look like? <coughs> yeah, he looks like this dude. <coughs> what is this dude going to look like? <coughs> it's going to look like this. He goes through four. What is the slope if a y equals line looks like this? Zero. He is zero. That is correct. Almost everybody got everything on the last page for the most part. Not too bad. Um, how can you tell whether a slope is positive or negative? It goes up or down. Yeah, how do we read a graph? Left to right. Left to right. So if I'm reading a graph and it looks like... It looks like this. What am I dealing with? Positive. Positive slope, which means we're making money, right? What if it's going down? We do not want to be losing cash. It's going to the right up and then just negative. So get out your notes. Today we're talking about graphing equations in slope intercept form. We will be doing this with our calculator as well as our lovely handy schmandy. Ew. What would what would you assume made all those marks? The uh, upper March March. Ew. That's Ew. Gross. That is, that is not the life that I wanted. Can I help you? Um, no, that slope is going down. So that would be a negative slope, not a positive slope. 
is this is right down here. Four minus five is negative one. Four minus two is positive two. Got you, got you. Yes, yes. All right, so now that I have thrown those away, I've got to disinfect my fingers from the chewed pencil germs. Yep. Don't need that in my life today. We don't know who did that. It's just for... Okay, again. I thought I wrote it. I don't eat wood. How should we be keeping our notes? Yes. Well, dun, 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 dun. Yes. Can I see your thing? Yes. Logan's really good at it. What should we be keeping our notes in? Yes. Go for it. Composition notebook. What happens if you come to class one day and you don't have it and you got to keep them on a single sheet of paper? Yeah. Not good. You either copy it in or you better glue it in because this thing will save your life. I do have a lot of students that tell me that even though they're not in algebra anymore, they still use these notes for algebra two as well as a little bit of free calculus. So keep them. I don't know what happened to mine. What, your free algebra, algebra notes? I could probably find it if I tried. Uh, it's either in the trash or somewhere in the middle. Nice. <laughs> Anybody remember from seventh grade? What is slope intercept form? Oh, look at that. It's so delightful from the back row. Oh. Y equals mx plus b. What two values will we have numbers for whenever we are working with slope intercept? What is the m? What does he stand for? He is our slope. What does the b stand for? It's a little deceiving. Anybody remember? He is your y intercept. These two things are very important. Why do you think it's easier to graph something whenever it starts with y equals? You can stick that sucker in your calculator. However, again, you have to know what it's going to do. And it has to be solved for. Y, it has to be solved for y. Okay, so. What they're going to start off with is they're going to say they want you to write something in slope intercept form and they're going to tell you that the slope is negative three fourths and they're going to tell you that the y intercept is let's say two. So what two values are they giving you? They're giving you the m and the y. So how would I write that in slope intercept form? Perfect. So all we're doing is replacing the M and the B with three or negative three halves and or three fourths and two. So what would happen if they asked me to graph this without my handy schmandy calculator? Well, you would go to Y two. And you would, um, I would go to the y-axis, and the first thing I would graph is, of three over four. so this is my y-intercept. So I'm going to mark this. This is the y-intercept of 2. So that means it hits the y-axis at 2. The slope now tells me what direction I'm traveling in order to be able to graph the next point. What does my slope tell me? Down three over four. Down three over four. So one, two, three over one, two, three, four. He looks a little bit like this. Once I have two points, can I graph it pretty easily? Yes. Yes. Um, by looking at this, does it logically make sense based on the fact that the slope is in fact negative? Yes. Yes. So let's open our handy schmandy calculator and let's double check our work. Let's do negative three divided by four x plus two 
and let's hit graph and see if it looks like this guy right here. What up, Palm Pickle? Okay, if it is negative three over four, that's rise over run. So this tells me instead of rising up three times because it's negative, I'm gonna drop three times. So I start at the y-intercept, I go one, two, three down, and four over. So that kind of gives you your rise over your run. So this is, that's, that's the negative three and the four part, whoops. And this is over four. So that'd be down three, over four. Believe it or not, in the prep work that I'm doing with the geometry students for ACT help, there is in fact questions about slope on the ACT. So would that be something that you all could calculate yourself? Uh-huh. Heck yeah. Absolutely. It's the y intercept is two. Yes. It's whatever you're adding to the X or the like. So if the equation was y equals negative three fourths x plus four, four would get the y intercept? Yes. The guy that's on the end all by himself, he is your intercept. Whew. Some of the things in the book just make your brain hurt. Okay, so let's do another one that we gotta put it in the right form. So let's say they tell us slope is one third Y intercept is negative two. So I'll give you a second and then we'll write it in slope intercept form. Mr. Mead, are you writing all of this down? Yeah. We could all benefit from a deep breath once in a while. What do you agree, sir? Mm -hmm. So minty, it's delightful. Okay, so Nate, you want to give it a try? How would I put this in slope intercept form? True, but how would I write it in an equation? It's going to be y equals. One third x. You are correct. Plus negative three. Or we could just write minus two. Okay, so let's draw ourselves another little rough graph. Okay, so where in the world do we even begin? Y. Negative 2 on the Y. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the Y axis. I'm going to graph. That is my Y intercept. I, I always have students, and I, I know it's really hard to get out of this habit. I always have students that are like, no, I'm going to start right here. You can't start right here. You have to start wherever it hits the Y axis. Now, my slope says one third. So that means I'm gonna go up, how many times? One. And over to the right. So I'm gonna go up one and over one, two, three. And right there is gonna be the second point. So we went up one and over three, or whatever it was. We're at, whoops, it's all the way down here. So again, let's grab our calculator. You don't have your calculator open yet. So let's open the calculator and let's do one third X minus two. And let's hit graph. Sheesh. So pretty. You're welcome. Let's turn this this way. All right, so what does yours look like? Is it pretty pretty? I like it. It's nice and pretty. Okay, now here, here's Miss Barnes going one step further. If I wanted to know what points are on this line, how would I find that? By hitting second table. There you go, second table. So everybody do that. Ooh, that's some nasty stuff. Hit second and then table. Why do I say that's some nasty yucky stuff? Yeah, look at that weird stuff for the Y. The Y1 gives you a lot of like weird decimal stuff, right? Seven. 
1.3. Yeah, all kinds of weird stuff. What do you notice about the X values though? Oh. Yeah, they're pretty, but the other ones are not so pretty. Where is it say table? Um, table is right up here. So you do second and then you hit table. So it's kind of the blue guys. And that's going to tell you everything that's on that line. Now, the other thing was, in order to be able to graph this using the calculator, it had to be solved for? What? Yes, one is right. Give me a variable. There you go. So, slope intercept form. must be solved for y because what's going to happen is just that on my floor I just I don't even know anymore 3x plus 2y equals 6 dun dun dun, dun. is what I have written on the board slope intercept form what? Standard form. Ooh, there we go. Middle of the room. It is standard form. If they give you standard form, how in the world are you going to turn it into slope intercept form? Find the x and y intercept. No. We are going to solve for y. They're going to give you standard form. You have to turn it into slope intercept form. So if I'm going to get Y alone, who is with my Y? The 3X. The 3X. I got to move him all the way over somewhere else because I don't need him over here. If I'm going to move an entire piece somewhere, that's addition or subtraction. How do I get rid of a positive 3X? Subtraction. subtraction. I'm going to subtract him from both sides. When I do that, I get 2Y equals negative 3X plus 6. Why can't I just squish these two together? Yeah, we don't need multiplication. We need, it's just addition or subtraction. I have a 2 touching the Y. How do I get rid of that? I'm going to have to divide. Okay, if I divide one thing by 2, how much else do I have to do? Everybody. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. You can't just do one thing to this piece. It has to be to everybody on the other side. So whatever you do to one side, you have to do? Just like a fraction. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do? If you manipulate a number one way, you have to manipulate the other number the exact same way. That's the rules of math. So you can't do 2y minus 6. But you can do 2 minus 2y minus 3. I'm confused. If you wanted to get rid of 2y. I don't want to get rid of 2y. I need the y. Yeah, I know. But like, say like there is another number there and you wanted to get rid of 2y. Could you subtract it from both sides? Yes. Even though they're not the same. Yes. It's just moving it. Testing the Jesus in me today. What? You're testing the Jesus in me today. He's like taking his pencil, tapping the side of it now. Like, just... not, not good. Oh, this is definitely not a song that we need right now. Um, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Like, we can't. We can't do. All right, so let's look at another one we're going to have to solve because these are going to be the ones that are your challenges. I guarantee it. 6x, negative 4y, 16. 6x. So this is standard form. Would we agree? Yes. Yeah. S-T-A and D-A-R-D. When you try to spell, things don't look right. So 
if you need to, and you need to draw kind of some rules for yourself, let's do it. What would our first step be? Articulate in words. What are we going to do first? Okay, so how do we do that? We're going to subtract 3x or 6x from both sides. Because according to the property of equality, whatever you do on one side, you got to do? Yeah. Yep. That's going to make this equation now negative 4y equals negative 6x plus 16. Why do I put that in front of the 16? Come on, somebody give me some logic. Use your brain. What is slope intercept form? Y equals. Who comes first? The x before the constant. Okay, so now I don't want to get rid of the whole thing right here. I only want to get rid of a piece of it. So what part is that? Negative four. So that means division. So now we're going to divide both. sides by negative 4. So this and this, that's going to go away. I just have y. Um, negative 6, negative 4, that reduces to 3 over 2. And 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. Why don't I put 1 and a half in this spot right here? Why am I putting 3 over 2? Because the slope. Okay, so what's that matter? Can I have 1.5 as my slope? What else? We want a fraction or a whole number. Is a whole number in essence a fraction? Yes. Yeah. You all right over there, Roy? Mm -hmm. She's holding her head. Her body language says she's she's frustrated. What? Somebody just say wait now. Okay. <coughs> okay so how about we do one on the board and i'm going to have you try to do this on your paper and we'll see if we get the same thing so you try to take standard and turn it into slope intercept All right, so somebody give me step number one. Add 3x. Yep, got to do the opposite. So we're going to add 3x to both sides. So these guys go away. I have 7y equals 3x plus 21. Now what happens? Divide by 7. What is the y-intercept of this particular line? Three. What is the slope? Three sevenths. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you something yucky. So you don't have to write this down. I just need for you to listen for two seconds. If this is something, a concept that you don't get now, you're going to make life really, really hard on yourself. And I'm going to show you why in like two seconds. Okay, in algebra... And this might be chapter five, which is like the most challenging, in my opinion, for students, not because brain-wise it's a, an issue. 
It's just a concept that, again, if you don't get this stuff, life is really hard. So in chapter five, what you're going to have to do is they're going to give you stuff that looks like They're gonna give you not just one linear equation, but two. And what you're gonna to have to do is always have them in standard form because I just, eventually you're gonna to have to tell me where do these two lines intersect and you have to give me the identical point in which they intersect and not using a calculator. It's good what? fun stuff. No calculator? No calculator. What you actually have to do is you have to figure out a way to make something an opposite. How would I make this guy an opposite of that? Negative 2 y. Okay, so not negative 2y. Well, true. But what, what can I multiply this by to turn it into negative 2? So I'm going to have to change the whole line, which becomes negative 4x minus 2y equals 8. Ooh, that's going to be a nasty answer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add down the columns. That's going to give me negative x plus 0 equals 16, which means negative x, 16, x is negative 16. That would be your x value in the coordinate pair. I can plug that back in, solve for y, voila, I'm done. It's going to be very challenging if you can't make sure that everything is in standard form first. Make sense? So again, the, the wonderful part about this is we do a flip chart, and the flip chart is like uber helpful and has a lot of directions on it. But is one negative sign enough to mess up an entire problem? Yes. yes. And these are going to have like eight steps for every single problem. So get the good stuff today. Make sure you can put it where it's supposed to be today. Okay, so now one other part of this particular lesson is recognizing things yourselves using a graph. So if the book gives you a graph, for you people that like a little bit of mental math, these will be a little bit fun for you. For you people that want identical things, it might blow your mind just a hair, which is totally cool. So what if they give you a line and they ask you for slope intercept form? So I'm gonna say if given a line, mm. you must then write and slope intercept form. Okay, so we have a line. There's a few things we can identify fairly easy. Would you agree? Yes. Can we identify with our eyeballs what the y-intercept is? Yes. Okay, so what's our y-intercept? Negative two. two. Yeah, this dude right here is your y-intercept, so that's pretty easy. We got him. We need that in order to be able to put it in y-intercept form. Now, if you want to find the slope because you can't count up and look at it mentally to yourself, you, I feel like, are going to look at this and go, I know the slope. Because if I start here and I go up two and over three, my slope is two thirds. He might be able to do that pretty easily. Other people are going to need to say, okay, I'm going to need to find that point and that point and do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, whichever one works for you, right? That's the best part about an answer. There's a couple ways to get there. But if you can, and you can just go up two over one, two, three, you know your slope is two thirds. So now how would I write that in y-intercept form? Y equals two thirds, x, two thirds x minus y. Perfect. Two. Absolutely. Mine, boom. For linear equations, there are so many forms of lines. There is standard form, y-intercept. We're gonna talk about systems of equations. We're gonna talk about how to know whether two lines are parallel or if they're perpendicular. What's perpendicular mean? Awesome. Yeah, they form right angles. Uh, don't worry, we're doing a flip chart over this section too, so it won't be terrible. What's a flip chart? What's a flip chart? Yeah. You will. Um, I'm a very visual learner. Anybody know for a fact that you're a visual learner, you have to see it? Um, I have a few students, which this is not me at all. Governor's Cup was not me for this reason. There are some people that hear it and they really understand it fast because they hear it. 
Governor's Cup is built for kids that are auditory learners, meaning you can hear it and get it really fast. I have to see it. Just like whenever you all ask me questions, what's the first thing I tell you to do? Bring it to me, let me see it. I have to be able to see it to explain something. Um, so a flip chart, if you are a visual learner, it gives you, like Maddie, I can tell you're a visual learner. When she turns in a test, she not only turns it in and it's neat and organized, but she highlights every single answer. It makes her see it better in her mind. Um, if you're visual and you can put a color to a concept or something that you can flip up and it has rules, it makes life a lot easier. So that'll be nice in this class. What up, Pump Pickle? I, I'm a very bizarre case. Like, for example, I, Carline would be the easiest thing in the world for me. They actually have an online quiz, and more than likely you'll take it this year whenever you guys are doing, um, like, study skill stuff. Like, Miss Vance does this almost every year. And the test will tell you whether you're visual, whether you're auditory, or whether you're haptic, which is, like, hands-on learner. Sciencey people are very hands-on. Um, when I took mine, almost every single bit of mine is visual. I have to see it. So I'm the person that could sit in the car line and figure out what car Grant's dad drives. And every single day I can associate Grant with that car. That's me. So once I see it once, I know exactly who you are. Like I can recognize Allie Mae's mom and dad on the road like this, just based on what they drive. Um, visual learners, you have to figure out what style works for you. Haptic learners, it's way harder because if you're a hands-on person, this stuff is not easy, right? But the flip chart is good for you because you are manipulating things with your hands in order to learn. Um, auditory people is pretty easy because you're writing and hearing at the same time. Mine is, I'm a visual and that's why I'm not very good at language art. Yes. Yep, makes it harder. Okay, so let's talk about what I want you to do. Okay, so turn in your book to page 220. Oh. I want to do 11 and 12. I want to do 17 to 26. Addie, we missed you. We hope you come back soon.